Past the eastern slope of the Andes, on the edge of the Amazon basin, lies a region so remote, it is now still barely explored. The place is known as Manu, a massive pristine rainforest near the southeastern border of Peru. Through the heart of this region weaves the Manu River, a life-giving artery around which some of the Amazon's most endangered species continue to thrive. Venture into Manu is to enter one of the remotest places on our planet, the primordial Amazon, much as it was when the first dawn arrived. Ancient rhythms of predator and prey remain unchanged. Peccaries, relatives of the pig, are a tempting quarry for the jaguar. The wet season's bounty of plants and roots is quickly abandoned at the hint of danger. Two are dangerous, and the big cat knows this. With two inch tusks, they'll viciously attack a predator if one of the herd is wounded. successful hunt has disturbed a troop of howler monkeys. Their calls can be heard for miles and are used to guard their territory. Like peccaries, howlers are vegetarians, spending most of their day feeding quietly on leaves. Thirteen species of monkeys live in Manu, more than any other place in the world. Although seemingly safe 100 feet up in the forest canopy, they too have their predators. One of the most fearsome is the rare harpy eagle. With a seven inch spread of talons, he can easily throttle a monkey.
The harpy wasn't hunting for himself. He has a nest in a dead Brazil nut tree. Mother and her chick await his return. While not the largest of eagles, harpies are the most powerful, feeding on monkeys and tree sloths that weigh up to 10 pounds. The male's job is done once he delivers his kill. Both parents bring food to the nest, but only the mother feeds the two-month-old chick. All the food except the bones is consumed even the monkey skin. Nothing here goes to waste. A yellow tufted woodpecker shares the harpy's tree. Too small to serve as prey, it's merely a curiosity for the male harpy. attracts the attention of scarlet macaws. Big trees fruit unpredictably, and when they do, they provide a feast for a wide variety of rainforest animals. The figs themselves last only a few weeks for the vast majority are quickly eaten before they can ripen and fall to the ground. The fig tree does exact a price for giving away its fruits. Its seeds gain a ride in the bellies of the animals and travel far through the forest. After the figs are digested, the seeds are left in deposits of dung high on another tree's branches. While seemingly innocent, it's a ruthless strategy, the beginning of a murderous plot. Slowly, the invading fig tree sends down deadly roots. If the roots are successful in reaching the ground, the host tree is doomed. For now the invader has access to the water and minerals it needs. Recharged, it sprouts new branches, which begin to smother and strangle the host. Gradually during a battle that can last for more than 200 years, it's the strangler fig that wins, having killed its host to gain a place where it can thrive and grow in the canopy. the strangler figs are carried away by monkeys and birds. Some of the dangerous fruits fall harmlessly to the ground. 
There, their murderous strategy can be foiled by a hungry agouti, a four-pound rodent that scavenges on the ground. The sudden bounty of figs is a windfall for the agouti. Yet the figs attract not only vegetarians, but also carnivores, searching for easy prey.